Hello and welcome to another video from Double O Rail. In uh, this video, we're going to give you guys some uh, quick uh, tips uh, for using the uh, CMX uh, track cleaning car. Uh, the CMX track cleaning car is a uh, HO scale, um, kind of American brass product. Uh, it's quite popular. Uh, I know uh, a lot of the major uh, YouTube channel guys have it, uh, especially uh, the ones with a larger layout. And so this is very, like, really, really handy. It's very, very heavy. Um, but it, I actually have to use two class 20s uh, from Bachman to, to pull this. Uh, it's got KD couplers and so on. Um, I actually have a more detailed video on it, which I'll put in a link above. Um, but basically, um, this thing is the ultimate uh, track cleaning uh, kind of apparatus. So if you're getting tired of using uh, the trusty old uh, Pico track rubber, uh, this thing will will save you a lot of time now, if you've got a small layout like a six foot by four foot loop and you got two tracks uh, don't waste your money buy some more trains uh, just use the track rubber it'll take you like five minutes to run around the track however if you've got a much bigger layout like uh, you know maybe 10 or 15 feet more complicated track work point work so on then uh, one of these is definitely worth investing in but today's video, I wanted to give you guys some uh, money-saving tips as well as some uh, tips from uh, us using the, the track cleaning car. And we've had this for several years, uh, so we have some experience uh, with it and we use it quite regularly. So um, the first thing I wanted to look at was the consumables because that's really where you're going to spend your money. Uh, you've got the uh, track cleaning uh, pad and you also have the fluid that goes into it. So we use uh, two types of fluid. Um, you've got a Gugon, which is an American sort of chewing gum removal product um which is hence the name why it's called gugon uh basically if you got some kind of sticky mess on your carpet this is the sort of thing that you would use and um, it does evaporate i believe it is uh flammable and i wouldn't dr go drinking it or anything but uh as it is toxic um but this is dirt cheap right over here in the states i got this bottle here for a dollar out of the dollar tree uh so some of the, the pound shops over here i uh, carry it um, you can get it in reasonably sized bottles, a little bit bigger than this, uh, for a couple of dollars. I think that's what's available in the UK. So uh, if you don't have a friend in America who can ship this to you, and you're not over here on on holidays or something, um, you know you can order it off of Amazon. Uh, now there's a couple of different versions of this. Uh, you want the uh, standard uh, kind of uh, yellow colored one. I do believe they have like some orange and an industrial product. Uh, you don't really want to use those. You just want to use the standard Gugon. And um, the other thing that we use at Double RL is uh, this 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, standard first aid uh, antiseptic. Uh, I get this at uh, Sam's Club. It comes in two large uh, 32 ounce or one quart or 946 milliliter bottles uh, for a couple of dollars. So I usually stock up on that when I go to Sam's Club. And I can get a year's supply by just buying like two or three bottles of it. Um, now the other thing is the uh, CMX uh, track cleaning pads. Now these come on a little roll. Uh, I think it's about 70 or 80 centimeters you get, and uh, which I think is about just under two foot. And it's not actually cheap. It's a, you know, runs here, I think in the UK about six or seven uh, pounds. And it's about the same price here in the States. Um, so one of the things that I looked at was, you know, this is probably one of the pricier things. So I was trying to figure out if there was an alternative. So a few years ago, I went uh, down to a fabric store because this is just basically fabric, right? Feels like it might be a felt or velvet or something. So um, I went down to the fabric store and I showed it to the lady that worked there and I asked her if she knew what the separate material was. And uh, she told me that it was um, upholstery fabric. And so uh, she pointed me in the direction of the upholstery fabric section. And um, I went around and, and basically started looking around to see what I could find. And uh, one of the things I was looking for is th this particular um, product, um, while it's kind of ribbed, so it, it might actually work okay in terms of pulling uh, stuff off the track. It, the actual type of fabric it is, which is, uh, it feels like it's almost like velvet. Uh, it gets wet really, really easily. And then it stays wet and it's, uh, once it's wet, it really doesn't do much for cleaning the track. Um, so after a long while, um, I came across this fabric at the fabric store 
and um, basically you can get this on Amazon in, in the UK as well I'll put a link to it in the store um, but basically this has got like a chevron pattern on it and the way it's woven um, the upholstery fabric basically uh, it's a little bit raised so when you run it along the track it, it generates some friction and it generates it's just raised enough that if there's like dirt on the track uh, once the CMX kind of loosens it up a little bit it'll um, you know pick it up and so on uh, the other cool thing uh, with this is that the chevron pattern uh, is alternated back and forth and you can see there it's the exact width of the CMX track cleaner uh, so that's that's real handy you always have the the line there to cut it so what I do is I have a strip measured out that basically has the correct length for the CMX and then all I do is after I've cut a few pieces out um, I just take the scissors like this and cut down that uh, line between the two chevron patterns and it doesn't have to be exact but like so and then I end up with my own uh, ready to roll uh, track cleaning pad and uh, just to give you an idea of how much cheaper this is I got a yard of this uh, which is about this wide I don't know if you can see that so it's considerably uh, long if I show you where I've cut it you'll get a better idea um, yeah so this here is where I've cut it and, and so I think that's uh, two strips right there and so it's got all all this so if you bought uh, track cleaning pads recently, uh, what I'm about to tell you might make you a little bit um, kind of um, upset, but basically um, that yard of material, uh, the width of the, uh, the the material there, um, it it ended up costing me less than, than than a couple of dollars. So I think it was less than the the seventy uh, centimeters uh, that you get on a reel, and it's almost like a lifetime supply. Um, I basically haven't even burned through 10% of it yet and I bought it like 2015 maybe and it's not 2019 so like four years uh, so uh, strip of fabric and uh, you get the right one it, it's good to go now the cool thing about fabric stores is they will give you uh, test pieces uh, so you can look for some fabric that you think might work ask for a test piece and then you can uh, uh, bring it home and try it on your track cleaning pad and uh, go from there okay so the other thing I wanted to show you um, was uh, we, we generate a lot of used track cleaning pads right so um, normally I think a lot of people throw them away um, but what I've done is um, you know it's fabric so you should be able to reuse it a couple of times at least uh, as you can see here um, this one's obviously been used and it's uh, still a bit stained uh, some of these come out pretty well some of them stay stained some of them you've got to sort of agitate a little bit um, but basically um, what I've done here you can see this one's clean more or less um, so you just want to make sure that when you run your hand over it it's not um, you know coming off on your fingers or something but more or less uh, you can see the water there is a little uh, kind of dingy as well but what I've done is I got this uh, plastic uh, food container so this is like like a little mini lunch box that your kids would take their school lunch to and what you do is you put all the track cleaning pad in there uh, you fill it with um, the 91% uh, rubbing alcohol and you seal it up like so, seal up like so and uh, give it a bit of a shake and then uh, basically just let it sit there uh, for a day or two when that's done uh, I basically uh, dispose of the uh, rubbing alcohol that's been in there and then I rinse everything off with the water and then um, I get some boiling water uh, from the kettle or the Keurig or, or whatever you want to do. I found that the Keurig's a, a real easy way to boil water these days. Um, and then what you do is you take a small amount, and I mean a small amount, of uh, washing powder. Uh, so whether it's the liquid or powder, it doesn't really matter. Uh, whatever you normally use to wash your clothes with. Um, you put it in here uh, with your stuff. If you've got OxyClean, that works really, really well. And then you just dump the boiling water in there. And... Um, be careful with the boiling water but once it's all in there and sealed up um, give it a good shake and the nice thing with these food containers is that they're pretty much sealed and they're designed to hold uh, things like liquid sometimes so uh, you can see there it's getting uh, sort of uh, 
bubbly and then I just let it sit right so I let it sit there I'll set it aside somewhere and let it sit there for a few days and then um, a couple of days later I'll you know every so often I'll, I'll shake it up um, then I'll rinse it all off and then uh, repeat the process it's much better than throwing these in the washing machine I can tell you that um, and then uh, when it's all done I usually just take them out I lay them out on a bit of cardboard or whatever and let it dry and then they're uh, ready to go again uh, they're, they're completely reusable um, so you'll get at least I think these are the original ones I've been using now for, since 2015 uh, so you, you'll easily get a, a couple of years out of them uh, so it's uh, definitely well worth it and I also um, usually once a month I'll start a new set uh, just to uh, help clean the track a little bit better all right, so um, the other thing that we use to clean a track, if you've got a really uh, stubborn spot, is the Pico track cleaner. Uh, it works really well. Uh, we've used a lot, quite a lot of track cleaners over the years, and uh, the Pico one is definitely by far um, the better option. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, I can uh, show you my container of uh, track uh, rubbers here. Um, this one's an old Hornby one. You can see it's all crusty and dirty, and uh, it really does not um, bode well after a bit of use. Uh, it's kind of nasty. Um, this is a substantial looking Gage Master one. Unfortunately, it's useless. Uh, it comes off in kind of like clumps and almost leaves a, a kind of scatter type residue all over your layout. So you got the Gage Master one, it's junk. Don't waste your money on it. Um, it's just not good. Uh, so the Pico track cleaner uh, seems to be the, the way to go. Uh, it uh, doesn't leave too much residue in terms of, you know, at least a little microscopic residue, but nothing crazy. And it does a really good job of getting the track clean. Okay, so we're over here on the layout. And I uh, just want to show you that what we use for the uh, CMX track clean. All right, so I use these uh, two Bachman uh, Class 20s. Uh, they're pretty robust locomotives. Uh, I just want to give you guys a look at what we have going on. Uh, we have uh, two KD couplers, so I'm going to uh, uncouple that. And uh, of course, I'm doing it on a curve, so it's a little trickier. Um, but basically, uh, that in there. And we have uh, the CMX track cleaner, uh, which we're going to put in place here. Uh, so before we go and use the track cleaner, uh, we need to fill it. And so uh, what I use to fill it is uh, basically this uh, 3D printed uh, kind of funnel. Uh, makes life a little bit easier. So I move the locos out of the way. Um, we're going to undo these TMX uh, part with the uh, actual rubber gasket. We're going to make sure that when there is closed, if you have this loosened, it will start to um, pour liquid out. Um, so to pour the liquid in, um, I'm going to use uh, this uh, track cleaning uh, chemicals only uh, dollar store um, measuring cup. Now you can get these at your pound shop, dollar store here in the States. I got this one at Dollar Tree. It's plastic, it's got a little pouring spout, uh, which makes it a little bit easier to pour in there. Uh, you don't have to use this, you can use a syringe or whatever that comes with the uh, CMX. Uh, but I found that this is a, a more accurate way of doing it. Um, so I've poured some isopropyl alcohol in there. This is the 91% uh, stuff that I just showed you earlier in the video. And I'll set that aside. And then basically what I'm going to do is uh, just pour it in. Of course I'm going to do this left handed so um, bear with me. So hopefully don't make a mess. Now you don't need to fill it up. Now that should be good enough for now. Um, you can uh, always uh, pick it up. Now I use to see if it's uh, how full it is. Um, I have a paintbrush here. Uh, that I just dip in. So I take the plastic end of the paintbrush and I drop it in and see how far up it has gone. So I can feel that it's uh, yeah, about three quarters of the way full. So that's good enough for what I'm going to do in this video. So we're going to go and close up um, 
the gasket, you want to tighten it and then just loosen it and then kind of hand tighten it uh, just so it you know has some resistance on it. And then what I normally do is I release this until I see some drops of liquid uh, coming out the bottom there. Uh, if I lift it up, you can probably see it on camera, see it's uh, dripping. That's the flow rate, it's adjustable by this uh, center piece in here. And usually, depending on what you set the flow rate to, uh, you probably want to give it like 30 seconds to a minute uh, for it to get that pad a little bit damp um, before you start the train going. And then basically you just start the train going. I will go this way. And you can see there, those uh, two class 20s are having a bit of a trouble uh, pushing that, so it's pretty heavy. Uh, I usually run it at a slightly higher speed like this, so that it uh, can get around the track. Uh, and then once you've done it a few times, you can usually uh, let it back off a bit. So uh, I'm going to close this off real quick. So one thing to keep in mind is that the more uh, liquid you put on the track and the wetter the strike gets, um, the less traction the locomotives are going to have. Uh, you also want to make sure that the chemical you're using in the CMX is not only safe for the brass on the pad, but also safe for your, your trains that are uh, pushing it. Uh, so I found that rubbing alcohol um, is usually pretty okay. So you can see here already um, how much uh, dirt the thing has picked up off the track. Uh, so sometimes what I do with a section like this, if I know it's uh, extra dirty, I will go and run it once like this and then just go ahead and change the pad, uh, which is why uh, buying that yard of um, material is so helpful. So what I normally do too is once I've uh, gone and cleaned the track a couple of times and I've replaced the pads a few times, um, I typically will um, run it around with a dry pad just to make sure um, that the uh, it has picked up all of the, the dirt and so on. And then I'll run it one more time with a slightly less wet pad um, so that it will um, kind of clean over. Then I just let it evaporate and it's usually... Uh, pretty okay so we'll uh, run it again this way now I normally let this thing run around the loop uh, the reason I'm not doing it in this video is to save some time, but also uh, because I have a pendolino on the other end of the layout uh, that's currently being used for testing. So there's a bit of an obstacle on the line. But I found that these two Bachman class 20s uh, work really well. They're heavy enough locos and they, uh, they get the job done. Uh, so if you want this uh, 3D printed part, uh, I'm actually still working on perfecting it a little bit. It works well for the Gugon small bottles, it pours right in. I think I'll probably be add some kind of funnel on the top there. Um, but we'll have those. Uh, available for download on the Double RL uh, website uh, coming up here in the next uh, couple of days. All right, so uh, one thing I wanted to do uh, before I wrap this video up is just show you uh, exactly how heavy this thing is. So I've got our uh, handy scales here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just uh, put the scales on this uh, relatively flat section across the tracks and uh, just give you an idea. So I'm going to turn this on. 
Okay, so you can see there we've got the uh, camera ready to go. So what I'm going to do is it's uh, set to zero. I'm going to put the class 20 on it. And you can see there the class 20 is coming in at uh, 395 grams. Uh, so I'll remove the class 20. And I'm also going to put the other class 20 on there just to give you an idea. And it's coming in at 394 grams. So they're roughly about the same weight. Um, and then if I pick up the CMX track cleaner itself and uh, put it on the thing, you can see there it's uh, 323 grams. So it's almost the same weight as a, uh, it's only about 60 grams off being the same weight as the class uh, 20 itself. And I'm guessing that if I was to fill that, it would be even closer since it's been running on the track for a few minutes. So it's uh, likely got most of its uh, liquid out of it by now. All right, so uh, let's head back uh, to the uh, workbench. All right, so in uh, terms of safety, uh, you really uh, want to use something to pour the liquids in. Um, those bottles that, that come for the, you know, the isopropyl alcohol really don't have a spout on them, and when you're pouring them in, the you know, the kind of airflow can push back and kind of create splashing, which is obviously a little bit dangerous since it's flammable. You also don't want to get it on your, your layout and, and stuff like that. So I found that. Um, getting uh, some sort of measuring cup, like this works really well. Um, now you might want to use a smaller measuring cup just because you can then use uh, increments on the side, but you know, I can ballpark it pretty well, so it's not really a problem. Um, I found that it's important to get something like a permanent marker, like a Sharpie, and to write, uh, you know, chemicals, uh, track cleaning, and this is for a couple of reasons. One, uh, you don't want to put like your, your ballast glue or something like that uh, water PVA mix into this and then try to use it for track cleaning. Uh, you can probably clean it out okay, but you know, you kind of want to keep those things separate. If it's something that's used to clean something, uh, you want to try to keep it as, as pristine as possible just so there's no contaminants on it. Um, the other thing is you don't want your kids or your, your wife or spouse or whatever uh, or partner uh, to go and think, oh, there's my measuring cup. It's you know, sitting up here and you've been using it to put all sorts of chemicals in it and next minute they just rinse it out or clean it out a little bit and use it to, you know, make, um, you know, your dinner or cookies or something with. So you definitely uh, want to make sure that nobody uses this and you can get them from a pound shop. So I got this like from the Dollar Tree, like I said, and it's, uh, you know, you don't have to go steal your your, um, your stuff from the kitchen. You can just go ahead and, and buy stuff that's dedicated for the layout really cheaply. All right, so uh, hopefully you found this uh, video with some tips for uh, getting around with the CMX uh, useful. If you have any of your own tips, you know, please feel free uh, to put them in the comments below. Uh, I've shown you how to operate it a little bit, and I've got links to uh, some of my other videos uh, related to CMX as well as the CMX playlist. Um, other than that, I, just like I said earlier in the video, I have a really cool uh, project related to CMX and uh, some 3D printing that we've done, and it's not a, a filler, I can tell you that. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, we'll be out in a, about a week or two and uh it's uh it's gonna be pretty neat so if you're not a subscriber uh go ahead and subscribe as uh, so you don't miss that video all right so uh that's it for today hopefully uh this video will have saved you some money and also maybe uh helped you out a little bit with the track cleaning car so um if you haven't got one these things are well worth it like i said unless you've got a really small layout in which case the pico uh, track rubber is probably the way to go all right, so that's it for today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, uh, whatever you'd like to do with the video. And of course, uh, your feedback and uh, suggestions is always welcome. All right, until next time.